So hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Hacker Earth webinars. My name is Shubhradeep and uh, I'm a data science solution architect and also a developer advocate. So my primary job is to help startups, tech enthusiasts and developers uh, understand their, their problem and help them develop a data science solution. So uh, today I'll be talking about uh, IBM Watson and uh, Watson is uh, cognitive computing system as a service. So, so, so let's get started. So what is the agenda? So agenda for today is uh, introduction to cognitive computing and IBM Watson, underlying science and technology. Stories of Change brought to you by IBM Watson. Now let's start with the first uh, uh, first portion of, the, of our agenda. That is introduction, cognitive computing, and IBM Watson. So what is cognitive computing? I think the first uh, query that everybody will have is what is cognitive computing? So cognitive is actually, actually an adjective uh, which has been derived from the word cognition. So, what is cognition? Right. So, cognition. Uh, if you if, if you see the dictionary meaning of what cognition is, cognition is understanding, learning, applying the intelligence of a human being. So, this is something which we do. Right. Whenever we perceive something, we try to judge it, and then we try to put forward our recommendation or, or, or what we think is best. So that is what cognition is. Now what is uh, what is so special about cognitive computing? So cognitive computing is uh, in, in, in form of abbreviation it's CAII which means that it is contextual, adaptive, interactive, iterative and stateful. So, so so consider that you are having a discussion with your friend. So whenever you are having a discussion with a friend, your friend understands the context and based on the context, he replies to you. So after that, you, 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 your, 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 your conversation takes the next plunge. But when you take the next plunge, you still remember what you have discussed, right? So, 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 so the statefulness is never lost. Next thing is the adaptive part of it. So whenever you are exposed to a situation which is unknown to you, you learn from it, right? Now once you learn from it, if, a sim if you are exposed to the similar situation the second time, you know how to apply the means to get over it. So that is where the adaption part comes into picture. Why it is interactive? It is interactive because whenever a question is posed to it, it comes back with a solution. Once that solution is, is, is understood, it, 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 it takes the next plunge. What is the next plunge? The next answer in the next query. So, 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 or, or questioning back. So, so that is how, how a, 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 a conversation takes place between a human being. And similar way, a conversation takes place for a cognitive computing system. So, so what all things does it enable? First thing is the engagement. So if you see the engagement uh, of a of, of, of a normal programmatic system vis-a-vis -vis a cognitive system, you would see that in case of cognitive system, the engagement is interactive. What is, what is the way it discovers the data? So if you see in my slide, it enables EDD. So the first D is about discovery of the data. Now if you, if, if you see a normal uh, application or a normal programming system, 
what it does is that it goes and and fetches the data from a data source uh, to which probably it has got a connection based on the query that you raise. But whereas in case of cognitive systems, it actually understands the query and decides from which data source it needs to fetch the data. Last key important thing is the decision. So when 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 we say decision, what does it mean? It means that whenever you have put forward me a query and and you are in a dilemma, what should be the answer? I go back and and and, and from various sources I try to discover the solution come back and give you a decision. So the decision can be multiple, uh, may, may not be a single single answer, it can be a set of answers. And with that we probably say that okay, I, I, I understand your, your, your problem, I know what are the possible solutions, so according to me I believe this is the best solution. So it's more about a recommendation based holistic decision management. So that is where cognitive computing enables engagement, discovery and decision. With this we, we probably now have an understanding what cognitive computing is in terms of a system. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Now, uh, what are the different ways I, uh, how I can go ahead and probably harness the capabilities of a cognitive system? So there are three key ways, right? Number one, build a cognitive system using data science, neurolinguistic, neuro psycholinguistic, etc. concepts. So this is probably the most complicated way of, uh, of, of, of building something because it would, it would definitely need some amount of time to understand the underlying data, the concepts that you need either to do a classification problem or a regulation problem or probably go ahead and do a, do, do a, do a clustering. So, so, so it, 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 it varies. So you need to understand that. Now, if it is related to human cognition, you probably need to understand some amount of psycholinguistic concepts, some amount of neurolinguistic concepts. So with all this understanding, if you're trying to build a system, it would probably take you somewhere between 10 to 15 years to actually come up with a solution which probably can be used as an industry standard. Now, what are the what so 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 if this is something which is cumbersome, what 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 are the other options? There is a the, there is a second option as well. The second option is using open source libraries, train, test them, and classify them as per your requirement. Now, one of the key problems with the open source libraries is that we are not sure which version whether somebody is going to actually maintain those versions, whether number one. The second thing is that what are the vulnerabilities, whether somebody is actually doing a round of testing, a round of, uh, round of understanding of the vulnerabilities. The third point is that I'm not sure whether this service, this, this particular library is, is, is going to be available to move or not. So, so, so there are a couple of vulnerabilities, but the good thing is that you, you, you don't need to start from scratch, you already have something available. Now you need to take that, those libraries, put it inside your, inside, I mean you need to imbibe that, that, those solution into your, into your own code and, 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 and you can start from, a, from at least 20 to 30 percent of your job being done. But still, there are some 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 cautions which which has to be maintained. It's it's more like whether the APIs which are part of this library, how am I consuming it? Am I understanding it properly as I consume it? And 
is my developer who is probably building this building an app with this open source library is he able to understand the various languages with which a library is built so so this is this uh, so so there are pros and cons so again this would require less time than the possibility one but this still would require some amount of time to build across what is the third option that we have the third option is a cognitive computing system which is available as a service now what has been exposed over here uh, the key thing that is exposed over here is APIs so you are given APIs now all you need to understand is how the API works. You, there is no need for you to probably uh, to, to deploy those APIs because the APIs are exposed via cloud. All you need to understand is how the REST protocol works. You get your API key and connect it. So that's the that's probably one of the easiest way. Uh, and, and and but again here you need to take some amount of caution. You need to you need to find someone who can get a wholesome catalog of cognitive services so probably your use case at, at the initial stage might need a single or probably two service from cognitive uh, the APIs the primary reason being we always start from a from a smaller circle and our circle goes bigger and bigger in parameter so so, so based on a use case probably we'll be using one or two services on day one but probably would try to increase the service so, 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 so we need to have a longer vision to understand that which AP, uh, which, 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 uh, which service provider has got a wholesome catalog. The second point, whom you can trust. So, so, so the player should be someone whom you can trust. The reason why I say this is, is, is primarily because we don't want somebody uh, to provision the services from somebody whom we, we whom we know might not be available tomorrow or who might use our data to do something which is not permissible according to our standards or according to the country's uh, legal legal measures so so we need to understand that the third point is uh, who the, 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 the third and the key point is the APIs which are available as a service should be should uh, I mean we should be able to easily provision it and we can easily integrate it with our service so 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 we need to take into consideration these key three key points as we choose a cognitive computing system as a service now why I why I, I, I talk about this this key point is primarily because you need to understand whether you are going to build an AI system or whether you are going to build a solution for your customer. So if you are building an AI solution for your customer, then you need to understand that whether which is the easiest and the best way to, to incorporate a service. So that is where you need to choose like whether I want a, a cognitive computing system as a service whether I want to bring in some open source libraries or whether I want to build it myself. So with this, I, 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 I will probably introduce you to, to the third category which is the cognitive computing system as a service. So let's, so let me introduce you to IBM Watson. So what Watson is doing? So Watson is democratizing AI by APIs. Okay, so what I did is Watson. So Watson is actually creating a new partnership between people and computers that enhances scale, enhances scales and accelerates human expertise. So, so I think this is a longer sentence. To cut it short, I would say Watson amplifies human cognition. So a human being can talk, a human being can do trade-offs, so whenever we are given given with option limited set of uh, options and we need to choose the best from them we can do it uh, 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 we can we can start a conversation we can we can we can uh, go ahead and 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 understand the context and 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 the, and the underlying entities in when, when when one of our friends or one of our family member or somebody is talking to us 
so 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 that is the beauty which watson brings in but it brings in with scale now uh, if you can see below so we had different eras so we had an era of tab of tabulating systems we have ha we are, in fact it's still continuing uh, it is the programmable systems era it started from 1950 and still continuing and in 2014 with democratization of ai by apis as as, as the watson was brought in the cognitive system era got started now uh, we need to understand like what are the key capabilities that watson brings in from a traditional program computing system so the key understanding so 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 number 1 understanding number 2 reasoning number 3 learning so understanding cognitive system understand like you must do so as i have mentioned over here so the way we human beings perceive so as i am giving you a talk today you you are probably perceiving it in the similar context so when i say similar context as in we are not discussing anything else we are discussing watson so that is the context today so 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 when i am talking about programming or i am talking about apis i am talking about watson apis and how you can use it in your system so so we have that common context we have that common understanding so that is how even watson works next is reason so watson understands underlying ideas and concepts and 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 and, and as as the conversation happens it actually infers and extracts the underlying concepts and and, and then builds a hypothesis and responds back to you the point number 3 which is learning watson never stops learning getting more and more valuable each time so the learning is one of the key aspects like right from the time we are born we keep on learning right as a human being so think about a, about a child whose age is probably one day from the day one the child starts understanding the surrounding he, he or she looks around the surrounding learns from it and 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 then slowly grows 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 and 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 still keeps on learning right so that is what watson is also all about so so just to give an example watson was an open system which was not, not into any domain but today it is able to predict and help and recommend doctors to suggest the right medication for a cancer patient so this happened primarily because it started learning so these are the three key capabilities that watson brings into table now what are the few key features i'll talk about a few key features so a system that can listen understand and talk back to you a system that visually recognizes who you are a system that wants you to talk in natural way a system that can start a conversation with you a system that can emotionally understand you so uh, so mostly a machine would never emotionally understand us right but if we if we imbibe it with uh, the various various uh, uh, psycholinguistic and 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 and, and sentiment analytics and neuro linguistic uh, 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 the different patterns and different uh the different terminologies and keywords and 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 connect them and and, and make it aware of what we are talking about it can start understanding the emotions the underlying emotions so 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 that's the beauty of it after that it can help you to solve your dilemmas so a lot of uh, i mean uh, most of the time we all have dilemmas right we don't know which one to choose from because whenever it, it it goes beyond a particular limit we become clueless so that is where a system like watson can pitch in scale out and help you in making the right decision last but not the least again again i would say it helps you in your learning journey so let's say uh, I, i i don't know how many of your of your researchers out here but uh, typically as the life of a researcher so so um, so my job is to understand different cognitive 
uh, building patterns, technologies and uh, like things. So for me it's, it is very hard because each day there are thousands of people people publishing different stories, different different breakthrough technologies and and, and I think so for me it's not possible to to humanly go and search each uh, each research paper, each publication and, and see what people are doing. So a system like this can actually collect and recommend me and also also tell me what are the what are the key things happening. So I did not go to different sources and, and find the stuff. I can actually get a holistic picture right sitting on my on my system without doing any discovery. So that is how it aids in your learning journey. Now uh, let me give you a difference between what a cognitive computing system delivers vis-a-vis -vis a traditional search system. So if you if you if you are using any search engine which all of us will definitely be using so we will if you, if you go and search a probably for a person it would go down and and it will it will give us a set of links links to personal data company information article on probably specific events or topics and allied things and link to uh, uh, link to a set of uh, a set of uh, 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 data sources right but what is the key difference that is brought in by a cognitive system so when a cognitive system pitches in and it is requested to 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 find something related to a person it actually goes and 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 finds out the people locations shared uh, common addresses and, and nationalities and allied things. So it's no more limited to links or references, it is more related to the different linked entities to that individual. Okay. So so okay. Uh, so 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 those if you if you if you see the differences that I have just mentioned over here. So you can understand that it's not merely about going to a location and finding the links, it's more about understanding how a link is related, how an entity is related to an individual. Uh, so now, now, uh, now let me go and take a couple of questions uh, 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 and, 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 uh, and, and, and then proceed. Okay. So uh, I think uh, uh, as Azaz has got a question, is there any documentation available or, yeah, definitely there is some amount of documentation available, there are APIs available and there are also documentation available. Okay. So uh, I, 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 I will definitely share it out and I, I think as you go, as, 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 as the session goes ahead, I will also, you, you can also see the different links from where you can actually get the required information. How exactly it is learning, what kind of framework person is using to learn things. Uh, so that is from Mayang. So Mayang, uh, again, uh, so, so if you have worked with, a, with any, any, any data science system, so it, it is broadly classifies data into, into, so the learning pattern is broadly into supervised and unsupervised learning, right? So, uh, so Watson actually uses a mix of both the both the concepts, and we have got a set of underlying algorithms, which is again a few of them are patented, and 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 a few of them are homegrown, and a few of them are 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 already something which is uh, which is which is which is generic and open source. So it's a mix of that. Now, okay. Uh, I will take one more question and then I'll go into the session. So I don't know who is uh, who is who is uh, who would be that lucky individual. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me take take. Okay. So Ankur Shukla asks a question: Can I build a vision-based system using Watson? So so if I if I if I'm able to answer your question properly or understand your question properly. I am. I, I probably understand that you're looking for a visual recognition system, right? 
So if that is what you're looking for, yes, you can do it. Now in 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 in, in a visual recognition system, there are ways you can understand and an individual in the image, there are ways you can understand an individual, recognize individual. So all these things are there as I go proceed ahead in the slide. So with that, I would close the Q&A session for now and we'll get back. Okay. So uh, let me sh uh, uh, tell you about the key differences between a programmable system and a cognitive system. Systems which are programmable in nature. So programmable systems or traditional systems that you're using today are fed data. Whereas a, a cognitive system actually chooses the way it has to get the data. In traditional system, processing is pre-programmed by human. So ideally, if you write an application, you would pre-program it and then it would proceed as per the pre-processed nature, which is like you have defined a step A, B and C with some amount of logic and it will proceed in that similar pattern. But whereas in cognitive systems, it actually understands the, the, the query and based on the query using natural language, it builds the knowledge around. So once it builds the knowledge around, it, it, it responds based on the learning that it has received. Now, this learning will also have a confidence code along with it the location from where this data has been retrieved. So it is not merely a, a blank guess, it will actually give you the data points. So that is how a cognitive system like Watson works and even most of the cognitive system works in this pattern. Output predefined and programmed by human beings, as I said in case of programmable systems or traditional systems, the output is predefined. Now, 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 now uh, what, what happens in case of cognitive system? So, so, so if you see, it's like a baby. So, from the day one, if you if, if you teach your baby like A for apple, after some days, the baby will be able to connect that apple is a fruit. So, if you ask him like, tell me the name of a fruit, the baby will come back and tell that apple. So, similar way, the output is an evolutionary process in case of cognitive system. Now, what is what is uh, the fourth key difference? So, a programmable system is a human programmed machine to respond a, mach a, a, hu a human being as a machine. So, it's more like whenever you are interacting with, 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 with present systems, you are interacting them as a machine. You need to provide the right data, uh, right query, and then it will provide the right response. But whereas in case of cognitive systems, it is actually a machine which is learning how to respond to a human being as a human being. Now, this is how uh, Watson discovers the relationship in a, in a dynamic manner. So, if you, if, if you see in this particular image, it, it, it takes an individual and from the individual it tries to link the various other entities. So, an uh, individual is working in a company or have previously worked in a company, so all that data. Now, this company which he has worked with who were uh, the, the stakeholders. So it, uh, it is it is indirectly. So in this way, it creates a, 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 a graph of, uh, of, 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 the, of the connected entities for a particular individual. Now it is not limited to uh, just dynamic network maps. It, is, it also takes into cognizance the co-occurrences. So let's take about genes. So, so a gene, which is which uh, which is actually uh, uh, so 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 let us consider our our, uh, our DNA. So our DNA is, is 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 primarily based on a set of proteins. So these proteins, how how frequently these proteins are 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 are, 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 are occurring in a human being vis-a-vis -vis any other mammal or vis-a-vis -vis any other animal. All right. So, so it actually can give that relationship of co-occurrence. Now, uh, now, 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 these were all complicated things. So let's let's get into the simpler stuff. So, right. So, how do I go ahead and engage with IBM Watson and IBM Lumix? Okay. So, first and foremost thing is that sign up on IBM Lumix. So that's the URL which is given over here. HTTP colon. Lumix.net, 
So if you if if you go into this particular URL you, and 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 you will have to have a button for sign up sign up to the session. Now what all can you do with that, right? So a Bluemix is a platform as a service, so it, it it can help you run your apps. But but today we are focusing on 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 Watson, so I'll I'll quickly talk about what is the key 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 services which are part of it. So in Bluemix there is a category called uh, I, I, if, if if type parameters, I will show you then. So if if, if you go to Bloomingstar.net, on your left hand side, you'll have a left a set of categories. In in in, in that, you'll have something called service. In that, there is something called Watson. So you can go into Watson and provision any service. Now I'll go into the services in the next slide. But but this is a point where I'm giving a high level overview of what you need to do. So go and sign up for Bluemix. After that, you can start exploring the Watson API as as you need. So so there are uh, I mean, there are consumable APIs which you can directly use as it is given. So I'll show you the APIs next. You can even go ahead and customize those APIs as per your need. So there is something called concept classifiers where you can go and go and go and customize them. Now you can if you are into the field of data science, so probably you already have some predictive models and predictive APIs. So how can you augment your own creative models with cognitive? So that can also be done. Last but not the least, uh, if if you are on Bluemix, then you can even create your own creative models. So you can use SPSS and allied things. Even even uh, some of you are working on Python machine learning, or you are working on R. R so you can go ahead and create your creative models, so and, and and deploy them on Bluemix, and then connect with with Watson to get what you need. So that is another world which is combining the power of cognitive and creative. So let's not complicate things. Let's take it step by step. So there are this set of APIs which are made available to you via Bluemix. So I'll take them as we go ahead. So so this is actually a glimpse of the complete catalog that we have. So we have got from entity extraction to sentiment analysis to emotion analysis, keyword extraction to visual recognition, uh, vision APIs, data news APIs, face face detection APIs, and and natural language classifier, conversation APIs. So there are multiple of them. So now we have got so many APIs. How do we go ahead and classify it, right? So one of the key thing is 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 I have got so many APIs, but but can you just classify and simplify it for me? So 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 in in Watson, uh, there are primarily three different kinds of APIs. The foundational cognitive skills, which is something like speech to text, text to speech, the vision APIs. The visual recognition APIs, the the understanding somebody's personality using the personality insights API, the tone analyzer API. Now, now this, so why these are called fundamental uh, foundational cognitive skills, right? Because that is what we what is given in built to us as a human being. This all all this all all these uh, APIs which I'm I'm talking about, the features in them are actually in built to a human being. So we can we can see we can talk, and 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 we can understand an individual. We can we can we can we can understand when somebody is angry. We can understand when somebody is happy. So all these things are which which is which is in which is a present, uh, which is which is given to us like 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 born gifted. So those are like the foundational point of skills. Now uh, we 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 the second bigger block is that knowledge organization skills. So so we have got document conversion, rank and retrieve, alchemy language, alchemy data news APIs. So all this set of APIs that you see over here can help you in understanding the various knowledge repositories, how to connect, how to retrieve data from that, and how to process data. So 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 I will go and discuss about this in detail in the next slide. Third is the higher level skills. So, so, so language translation, so conversation, and natural language classifier. So, 
So believe me, today uh, 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 most of the search uh, engines as well as the, the, the search uh, boxes in, in, in various, uh, um, uh, various apps are not able to understand when you talk to them in natural language. So this is definitely a, a, a higher rating skill and that is brought to you by the natural language classifier. Now, now let's go into details. Okay, so this is the the wholesome set of alchemy APIs that we have. So entity extraction, sentiment analysis. So when I say entity extraction, what does it mean? As I said, how do I understand in a text who is it? I mean, which word is a person refers to a person? Which words refers to a company? Which word refers to a location? So this API actually takes the text and it gives you some out of out, out of box features where you can go and go and go and send it a text and it would keep in reply that these are the this is a person, this is a company, and this is a location. Sentiment analysis, this is pretty uh, explored thing. So it is more about understanding whether you are talking in a positive manner or a negative manner. Or it's a neutral thing. Keyword extraction, author extraction, language detection. So there are multiple of them. Uh, I I would say one of the key one over here is concept tagging. So let's say I'm I I I I'm talking to you and I I I I, I throw some terminologies. So let's let's make it simple and and and, and let's say I I, I say uh, a name of three cars. Now if I if I name three cars the other individual who is probably not aware of those three cars, how would he understand what is the other person talking about? That is where this particular API comes into picture and it takes that data, understand the concept behind. So let's say I, 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 I talk about Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini and, and, and the individual doesn't know what it is. So this guy which is this API will, will actually consume these words and come and say that okay this this particular individual is talking about automotive. So 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 this is what concept taking does. So similarly we have got taxonomy which, which which actually creates a hierarchy. The relationship we actually if you take a sentence it goes into that level of granularity. So if you see the text analytics, the sentiment analytics that we do we go down to it, the the word level, sentence level, and if, then we go ahead to, to the to the next, which is the document and the paragraph level. So we go to the the the, the smallest level of granularity. That is the beauty. What alchemy API brings. Next, we have image for the images. We have image link extraction, image tagging, face recognition. So all these key APIs actually formulate the key catalog. Items. Now, uh, what are the key Watson APIs? So, Alchem is an acquisition that we did in 2015, and 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 parallelly we had Watson. So there was some amount of, I mean, I mean a large amount of uh, similarity between what Alchemy Alchemy API was doing and what we are doing. That made us uh, that 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 was the key reason why we came together. So. Watson API, there is something called Tone Analyzer, which I'll show you an example. I'll also talk about the science and as well as a bit on the algorithm part of it. So Tone Analyzer actually takes a text and it, it goes into the document level as well as the sentence level analysis of the text. So uh, so I'll show you an example for that, so I'll not go into detail in this one. For personality insights, okay, uh, what do you understand by personality insights? So, 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 how do I understand whether you are an open individual, you are an extrovert individual, you are somebody who who can be made easily agreeable? How do I know about that? So, from your opinions, your blogs, your social footprint, your digital footprint, I can get that whole data, and then I can go ahead and use personality inside and get the details about the whole thing. Natural language classifier, as I already mentioned, that how how do we understand the context in which you are asking me a query? How do we understand the intent behind it? 
how do we understand the entities that we are talking about? So that is where natural language classification. Rank and retrieve is, is is more about how you see. You go to a search engine and see the page rankings, right? So what are those page rankings? So it's more about an algorithm which goes down, gets the data, and says that from my understanding, this particular uh, this particular data should be at the page one, should be at page two, should be at page three. So similar way, rank and retrieve also does the ranking from your data source. Okay. So you can create your own corpus and you can ask a query. It will go down to the corpus, get the data, and rank it accordingly. Trade of analytics, I've already mentioned about it. Language translation, easily understandable. Visual recognition, I have a demo for you. And, and where I have shown like how it works and what it gives. Conversation. So uh, most of you might be interested in creating chatbots. So this is an era of chatbots where where a lot of manual work which which currently has been done can be offloaded to a intelligent system which can do a conversation and based on the conversation come back and give you a reply. So that is where that is where this conversation API comes into picture. Now you, you know we have we have integrated our conversation API with various uh, messenger services. We have con you know, integrated it with Facebook Messenger. We have integrated it with Slack. We have integrated it with Telegram. We have integrated it with uh, with, with, with multiple other uh, WeChat. We have integrated it with multiple other other uh, messenger services, and we have created chatbots which are highly efficient. Many of the startups in Bangalore, because I'm based out of Bangalore and I am helping uh, many startups which are based out of Bangalore, getting enabled on 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 chatbots. So so they are using conversation API. Last is dialogue. Dialogue is primarily a front facing. So if you go to a, 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 a nice restaurant, so somebody will be coming over to you and would be saying that, sir, this is the menu that I have. This is what all you can purchase and and, and you can order. So, so it's more about that interface which, 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 which comes down to you and, 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 and starts that conversation. So that's their style. Okay. So, so now we should also talk about the underlying science and technology of each service, right? So, so how do I understand what services work using what and what is the science behind it, right? So, so, so let's start with tone and light. So this is an example. Okay. So this is where there is a customer who is having a chat with the uh, with the customer service. So this is a this is a transcript, small transcript of it. So customer says that hello, the agent says hello, agent says how can I help you today? The customer says someone created my account using my email accounts. Customer says this is not my account, uh, and, and 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 he says how can I delete this account? So even though I'm 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 talking in a particular tone, but what actually this 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 uh, what actually is a tone when 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 this particular discussion happens? So if it is a transcript or a text, I I have no clue what is the customer's tone. So you also, so this tone analyzer API would go down and say that when the customer says, "How can I delete this account?" The customer is disgusted. Is, is, is really pissed off with your service. And when a customer was saying that someone created an account using my email, this is not my account, and, and how can I delete it? So he was actually very angry. So from the text, without understanding uh, what, what was the discussion, it actually goes down and, and identifies that this, this particular uh, statement had some amount of disgust. This particular statement had anger. So, uh, so, 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 we would like to know what is the science behind the service, right? So, so the reason is how do we understand how it is going on? Uh, so, 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 even somebody asked me a question over here that. That what so 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 how do I understand the different parameters of to of, of, of emotions? Okay, so so 
in data science it's not merely about algorithms it, it is also about understanding the science right so so what is that science behind it so tone analyzer is actually based on theory of psycholinguistics so what is psycholinguistic so 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 this is psycholinguistics is actually a field of research that that explains the relationship between uh, the linguistic behavior and the psychological theories so so what what did i actually mean so what i actually meant was that this is uh, this is actually based on multiple set of research uh, researches which has been done in the field in 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 the field of uh, of linguistic behavior multiple set of researches which has been done on the psychological theories so i mentioned three base research papers uh, one over the number one which which is from 2008 by fast Lisa and david so its personality has manifest in word use so it's more about the correlation with self report acquaintance report and behavior so it's more about getting that kind of information and from that kind of information what i can infer so the second research paper which has been used in this is is, is from Gill. So it's like uh, Gill, Scott Nelson, and John. Uh, in 2009, they have written a paper called "What uh, What are they blogging about?" So what are people blogging about? Personality, topic, motivation in blogs. So it's more about understanding a blog. So when we write a blog, we are probably writing our own thought process into it. Now, how this thought process can be mapped to the psychological theories. So that is what, that is one of the bases which was taken into picture. The third one was uh, rating personality from Twitter data, which is more like how do you understand the social imprint? So the social imprint is is, is from the paper of Goldberg, Jennifer, and Christina McCon and Karen. So it was from the 2011 paper. So like this, there are five papers, which are the base papers, and then there are many more papers based on which, uh, which research was, uh, I mean, I mean the, the, the domain experts went down and have been the system. Now, uh, we know that this is the research which has been done, but how do we go ahead and qualify or, 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 or quantify the emotion analysis, right? So there are three key categories of it. The tone analyzer service uh, actually computes the tone with, with linguistic analysis and it computes the scorecard based on three things. The emotional tone, the social tone, and the language tone. So what is the emotional tone? It's the engram, the punctuation, greetings, the curves, and the underlying sentiment. So that's the emotional tone. Then there is a social tone too. So what is the social tone? It's more about uh, the openness, the extraversion, uh, the emotional range with what we come in and 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 also the agreeableness so there are multiple of them it's a combination of of, of what come uh, I mean what makes up the social tone lastly we have the language tone which is more about the linguistic analysis on the learned feature so whatever it has learned from the individual it runs a linguistic analysis on top of it now, uh, how do you understand this data which which our services provide is appropriate or not? So, so there is a there, there is a tough benchmark which has been set. So, for 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 the emotional tone, we actually run it against the standard uh, data sets called ICI and Cinevel, and for for emotional analysis for social tone, we tested it across multiple random surveys which are live random surveys from ground truth and similarly we also did it for the language tone so so the key three things over here is emotional tone social tone and language tone so we have taken that and we have ran uh, so the first one was ran across standard data set which is the emotional tone was ran across standard data set and the other two were ran across random uh, survey data which was collected which was from the ground which is actually actually the, the the comparing the ground truth with the results that we have received, and it fared pretty well. Now, uh, this is an example of uh, visual recognition at work. So, so we have taken in one image, which is randomly from the internet, and we have passed into our visual recognition. So, the beauty is that it actually says that this particular image has got a tiger in it. And this tiger belongs to the, 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 the animal family and it also is an animal. And on the, on the right hand side of, of the word tiger, you can see there is 1.00, 0, 0, 
which means that it is completely confident that this particular animal is a tiger. It is 99% sure that this is an animal and it is 91% sure that this animal which you are seeing over here is a mammal. So that's the beauty of our visual recognition. Apart from that, you can see over here that it gives a taxonomy. So it says that this, this is a tiger which comes from a category called animal. This is a mammal from an animal category. Now we should understand like how this particular, uh, so how the visual recognition system works, right? So, so let me let me tell you how it works. Okay. Now, uh, traditionally, if you if you see most of the uh, the, the 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 pattern recognition or the the image recognition and as well as uh, what, what you can say is a visual recognition, the systems generally, if you see, most of them work with uh, connected neural networks. Now, connected neural networks is one way of establishing, uh, a, a, a one righteous way of establishing that that image belongs to a particular, uh, image of belongs to a particular class, but what, what but that may not be best suited. Uh, so why it is not best suited is because so if you see my, if you are seeing on my uh, my screen, there is a five-layer neural network, right? So in this five-layer neural network, you can see every neuron which is there is connected to uh, to whatever it has got adjacent, right? So all of them are connected. Now what is can uh, so if you if you understand what is the what is the key uh, disadvantage of this? The key disadvantage here is that each neuron is connected to the other neuron, which actually means it, it, it is not able to understand the spatial part of it. When I say spatial part of it, how far is one pixel from the other? And this particular thing would actually A, degrade the, 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 uh, the, the correctness of your algorithm and it would not work for a large, uh, large scale or large variant of data. The second thing is that it 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 uh, it, it is not holistic in nature because it, it because uh, in this particular case, two pixels which are very near to each other, or two pixels which are far far from one another, both are considered as something similar. But what happens in case of uh, if of of our visual recognition is that we use a, a, a convolution networks which is part of deep learning. So we, we, we use one step ahead of that which is called a convolution network. So in convolution networks it takes into consideration the spatial data. So when spatial data is taken into consideration, so it, it, it primarily uh, the, the, the key thing over here is that it, it has got uh, the location reception fields. It has got a, 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 a shared weight given to you and you can see it has got a pooling. So you can see over here from a single image, 20 featured image. Featured images are, are nothing but, uh, so if you're familiar with, uh, with, with some amount of uh, machine learning algorithms in, in either in neural networks or a lot thing, you will you'll see that every, every input image is converted to a hidden layer. So in case of uh, convolution networks, it is not, uh, it, is, it is not like, uh, like, like each, each neuron is connected to its to a, to the other neuron in the next layer. So each hidden uh, hidden uh, featured map that you can see over here is actually taken from a separate localized reception field, and shared weight is given to each of them, and and it comes from a pool. So the reliability of these algorithms becomes much and much better. Okay, so. So this is something which have which we have imbibed in our algorithms, and 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 we have got a lot of variant into this, which actually allows our visual recognition service to be trained faster, and it can cater to a wider range of variants. So, uh, so so now I I think I would I would I would. Uh, I'd like to inform you, like, uh, there are a couple of questions to me which, which, which were asked, how can I use this? 
So I, as I said, go to bloomings.net, subscribe it, you'll get your, uh, uh, go to the services categories, go to the catalog services categories and you'll uh, get your service, get your Watson services. Uh, somebody is, is uh, uh, some, somebody has asked me an interesting question like why is, why Watson is not open source? So ideally, uh, even if I give you a, a, AI is an open source, you are not going to be able to do anything because for the convolution network that I have seen, you need considerable amount of GPU and for the considerable amount of GPU to run, uh, it can be possible only you have got that amount of gas stack. So, so that is how it is related. So even if it is based open source, nothing is going going to be going 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 to be uh, beneficial. But what we have done is that we have made it open system. So when you have made it open system, we are giving you all the APIs. Go and go and play around with it. It is it has got a freemium layer. Okay. So it has when I say freemium layer for each service, there are around for many of the services like 1000 API calls and 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 and, and, and 5000 10000 something like like that set of API calls are free for you so so sign up for 30 days sign so once you sign up in bloomix for 30 days is completely free for you you don't even need to punch in your credit card details and in the 30 days you can consume as much as you want after that you still have a freemium layer to run all your POCs so 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 that is pretty much taken care of last but not the least let me tell you some of the considerable stories which have changed the way uh, the traditional systems work so alpha models is a company which is into wealth management and they have changed the way the 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 the, the financial systems work so it has it has become a great marketplace where watson actually goes down understands the risk behind each portfolio and it advises the customer what step needs to take. This way your money becomes pretty safe. Manipal Hospital which is based out of Bangalore, MSK's Memorial Sloan Catering which is based out of US. So, so, so these two hospitals have used Watson. It started with Memorial Sloan Catering. So they have used Watson to build their complete cancer uh, to build, build a uh, to to help the, the 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 cancer patients and 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 have built up a complete solution on oncology. So, and this same solution on oncology is available at Manipal now. So the doctors need not go down search or uh, so 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 the time taken for diagnosis has reduced a lot because doc doctors need not go down do a lot of consultation, meetings along with colleagues and allied people. They have all the information available. Now all you need to give is the patient's condition and it will go and Watson will go down and find out uh, the, 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 the different results for it. So, so that's the beauty of it. Now uh, the helpful robots. So we have created a couple of robots as well. Connie, Connie is used at Hilton, Hilton Concierge. So we have automated the Hilton concerts. So where people, uh, uh, so so we have we have actually replaced a receptionist with a robot. The robot's name is Connie. So when you go and talk to Connie, Connie will tell you, uh, understand you, will know about you, and and, and then will suggest you a probably a, a, a better room at at Hilton hotels. So now Connie understands you better because it can churn a lot of data, your social data, whatever you have loved whatever you have liked, liked, whatever your preferences are and your digital footprint as well and then can suggest you something that's better. So now is again another robot which is actually uh, created, uh, which, which actually helps in recommendations in, 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 in retail and uh, I don't know how many of you have seen the trailer of the movie Morgan which has been created by Watson. So if you go and, 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 and search for uh, IBM creates first movie trailer by AI. See this movie trailer. Uh, I mean, the critics say that the actual movie trailer, which is created by 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 Fox, uh, compared to that, this the one which is created by Watson is more creepy. And 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 maybe I, I think you guys should go and go and check it out. Now this is the era of chatbots, right? Smart, real time, help for 24 by 7. So as I've spoken, like conversation API is a key to it.
Now, you, so that is a small uh, icon which you can see over here, right? Eco the India bot. So yeah, we have actually tested a small bot right for our 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 own own work. So uh, most of us don't remember when uh, when when there is a meeting. Most of us don't don't keep keep forgetting because uh, we we are different places. We doing different stuff. But a Slack the, the Slack app is always available to us. So we what we do is that we go and ask the bot that okay can you tell me whether we I got a meeting now. So it will go as a girl said, yeah, you have got a meeting now. Or it will say that you don't have any meeting this week, just chill out. Or uh, you can go and ask it, like, what are the dial-in numbers? So we have got bridges. So bridge is way of uh, multiple people joining the same call. So it, you can ask it questions like, OK, this is the bridge number. Uh, this, so this is my uh, uh, meeting. Please tell me the bridge numbers. So it will go and tell you. So don't need any sort of manual intervention. OK, uh, I think. This is what I could cover in one hour. Believe me, Watson is an open system, easy to use, and your imagination is a limit. So what I would say is that one hour is a pretty less time for me to cover the fastness of it. Okay, but I would take a couple of questions and 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 and, and see. There is a uh, so 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 here you can see that ask anything on Watson. So there is a there is a form which you will have. Go and fill that form and join our Slack channel. So there are startups, there are communities, there are tech enthusiasts who are part of this uh, forum. So people will come and reply you. Even uh, even many a time, I will come and reply you personally. So so please join this channel. So I know there are a lot of questions I can see. I mean I mean and plenty of questions are there. It is not humanly possible to actually answer everything in this one hour. So please join this Slack channel and we'll answer all your questions. But I can see some of the questions like Rajesh has got has been asking this question a lot of time. Can you tell me one use case of using Watson in B2B domain? Rajesh, B2B domain, we have multiple use cases. Okay. So, uh, so, so we have used it with multiple customers uh, like, like, like KPMG. We have used it with uh, customers like, like Cape Germany. So there are multiple use cases. If you're looking for something, join my Slack channel and I'll, I'll answer your specific terms. Okay. Uh, yeah, you join my Slack channel, Rajesh, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what, what are these cases are there. Uh, what are the different implementation to use these APIs for mobile app development? Harshit Pradapati. So Harshit, interestingly, today I came from, uh, today I spoke at mobile developer conference, which is something happening in Bangalore, I think today and tomorrow. So I, I, I introduced them to the cognitive APIs. So now the beauty is this, that you have got REST calls, right? I don't care with what what you have at the front end. If you know how to connect to a REST API, that's it. You will bring your use case, no knowledge of how to connect to a REST API, you don't need anything else. You can go ahead with it. Will Watson, will Watson be able to do machine learning? Uh, Raghunandan Watson is actually based on machine learning. So I'll take one more question and that is the last question. Why we are trying to mimic human intelligence? Why can't we give a sense of inherent logic to computers? I think that's a nice question that we should come. So uh, believe me, uh, what we 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 are trying to do over here is that we are actually when we say we're mimicking human intelligence, what we are trying to say is that we are trying to understand and, and infer from the, the, the human attributes which can enhance somebody's, uh, the way somebody interact with the system. So that is the, uh, the, the, the attribute that you want to bring in, the, the feature that you want to bring in. Now when you are saying that, uh, give, giving, giving a sense of inherent logic, so, so, so can we build a system without bringing in an inherent logic? To, 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 to behave it like a human being. You can't do it right. Human logic has to be there. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for joining the session. It was a pleasure uh, answering your questions. It was a great engagement. And, 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 and please join the Slack channel. I would like to thank Hacker Earth for conducting such awesome uh, webinars. Thanks, Hacker Earth for your considerable uh, uh, linkage and engagement with the community.
So thank you everybody.